Hey, what is up, awesome people? Shady Wags with Gotcha Back Gaming. Hope you're doing great. If you read the title, that is 100% true. No clickbait there. After 15 years at the same company, I received notification that I was being let go and that my job was being outsourced to another country. Now, not only was I being let go, but they expected me to train the five people that they hired to replace me. I did the most logical thing that a person could do in that situation. I dropped a couple choice words, threw up the double bird salute, and walked out. So now here I sit with no employment, very little funds, but I've got plenty of passion and I've got my dignity left. I started working on my resume and I guess I should have kept that thing current, but after 15 years at the same company, I kind of thought that was something I didn't have to worry about. So I sat there staring at the screen pretty unmotivated to even start typing this all out. And that's when an email popped up and it was from the Weather Factory. And they wanted to know if I'd like to try out their new game, Calta Simulator. I figured, what the heck, I'd give it a try. It's not like I had anything else to do now. Calta Simulator is a narrative card game. It's a single player game and the goal is to obtain your ultimate desire, like knowledge or power. And to accomplish that, you have to start a call. And this is not a Jim Jones Kool-Aid drinking call. It's more of like a Lovecraft performing rituals and fighting giant serpents call. I'm not really a fan of Lovecraft. I think that's creepy and weird, but I figured I'd give it a try. So I loaded up this game and the first thing I noticed, there is absolutely no tutorial at all. I just began moving cards around. I didn't know what I was doing. New cards were popping up, timers were counting down, and I was trying to read these narratives to get a better idea of what was going on, and then I died. The game was over. I don't even know how I died. I think I starved to death, but I'm still not sure. So I walked away from my first game kind of confused about actually everything that happened. The next day I sat down at my desk again and I was going to start working on that resume, but for some reason I decided to give Cultus Simulator another try. Now the second time around I did start making some more progress in the game. I started understanding more what these cards were and what they were used for. I started experimenting, dropping cards in different spots to see what the result would be. But what happened next completely changed my whole outlook of this game. I opened up a gate into the dream world. This is a hidden playing area in the game, and you have to open up these different doors to progress in the game, and each door requires a specific card to open it. After that, I became obsessed with this game. I had to make it through all those doors and find out what was behind that final door. Before long, my game board went from looking like this to this. I was recruiting cult members and I was sending them out on missions down into mysterious catacombs to procure ancient relics and manuscripts. I was then studying those manuscripts, learning new lore, then combining that lore to create even more powerful lore. I was sending my minions out to abduct strangers that I needed. I needed them as sacrifices to gain entry through gateways. I was sending henchmen out in the middle of the night to burglarize warehouses to fund our endeavors. I was forming groups to wage battle against dark spirits, cleansing them from the earth, and then studying the century-old treasures that they had been guarding. All this while eluding, evading, and deceiving the authorities who were out to imprison me. Running a cult had become my full-time job. So far, I have spent over 100 hours playing Cult of Simulator. I can't say I like playing this game, but once I opened that initial gate, I became fascinated with it. Once I started reading the cards and their vague depictions of what was going on, I became even more fascinated. A lot of what is happening in this game is left up to your imagination. When the game says that your followers are using the power of the lamp to guide your expedition through a cavern, are they really just using a flashlight? Or are they actually calling up on a demonic or a light and power to illuminate the path? That's up for you to decide. The game itself is not short. To start a new game and reach your ultimate desire, it can take anywhere from 20 to 40 hours. So it actually is a full-time job. The thing is, you can make it really far into the game, like 10, 20, 30 hours, and then lose, and you have to start over. There are positive and negative cards, and there's sometimes a randomness to those cards being generated. Now, most of the time with the proper strategy, you can get rid of those negative cards. But there are situations that sometimes come up that you can't. And all you can do is watch is 20 hours of gameplay tick away into nothing. If you enjoy a game with a steep learning curve, 
a puzzling task with no direction that takes days to solve, then Cult the Simulator is a great value at only $20. Finally, I did reach my ultimate desire of unbridled knowledge, but that's not the end of the game because there are multiple paths and endings, so there is some replayability. I guess I could go ahead now and start on that resume, or I could always start another call. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Yeah. Shady Wags got your back. It's so entertaining. You need to subscribe to got your back. Gaming, gameplay, and reviews. Even doing walkthroughs. This the best gaming channel. I'm just telling you the truth. PS4, Xbox One, or even PC. Plenty tips, all the tricks. This is just what you need.